Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to this next lesson in the C programming series. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at a special type of pointer known as a void star or a void pointer. So we've learned about pointers a little bit before and I have other videos on my channel if you'd like to take a look to get a refresher on that. So feel free to search those if you need. But let's go ahead and take a look at void pointer here. But first, before we dive in, let's go ahead and just give a little bit of a review of pointers just in case you're still catching up or getting practice with them. So let's say I have some variable here like x with a value of 42. So I'll represent that here, x, I've got the value 42 in this memory location, and I have some address here. Let's just say it's 800. And then later on in my code, I want to create a pointer. And typically we have a specific data type of things that we can point to. So for instance, int star p underscore x and it's going to store the address of x here. So again, I'll create another box here. Here's p of x. It has its own address, maybe somewhere nearby. And it stores inside of it the address of the thing that it points to. So this will be 0, x, 800. So again, that's how pointers work. All pointers do is store an address and of a particular type. So this is a pointer to integers. Now. Something that's quite powerful that we can get away with in C is actually creating what's known as a void star. And that would be a sort of generic pointer. So let's just go ahead and label this generic pointer. And for those of you who've done programming in other languages like Java or C++, you know about things like generics. And this could be one way that you could actually implement generics by using this void type here. Now, again, just looking at the sort of structure of this, we see the star here, which indicates that with the data type, we have a uh, pointer type here. Now void previously, when we've seen it, we've seen it in function calls. So for example, if I go over here uh, and write a function like void print hello, this simply means that there's just no return type. There's no return information. I could just simply type uh, return here or just omit the return if I like. So that's the idea or where we've seen void previously. So again, in this type here, this means we can point to anything. Because again, all this really is, this void star here, is just holding a memory address. Now, because we can point to anything, that means we can point to any object or type and even functions. So if we wanted to store things like a function and actually call it, we could do so. So let's go ahead and just look at a few examples here. I'll go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger here uh, so you can see on the screen. And let's see how this exactly works here. Now I'm just going to start off with something uh, relatively familiar, like the first example that we had here. So let's just go ahead and create a variable here, int x equals 42, and I'll create this void star here, and I'm just going to call it the uh, generic pointer. And it needs to point to something. So I'll have it store the address of x. Now again, because this is void, we don't have any actual type information. So let's just go ahead and see if this compiles first and foremost. Um, I'll compile with debug symbols in case we get any uh, errors. And I'll run our program, and it runs fine. No segmentation faults or anything. But how would we actually use this? So let's actually take a look here. Let's say we just want to print off the value x is. And let's go ahead and put in uh, the format specifier. And we know that we want to treat this as an integer. And this is where we have to be very careful with void pointers. So I'm going to go ahead and write in the uh, top, uh, or let me just write down here, careful <laughs> with these uh, void star pointers. You're going to find out that they can be potentially dangerous because we have to, as a programmer, do the right thing. And again, what I mean by the right thing is actually cast the data type. So the first thing I have to do is cast my generic pointer to the type of pointer that it should be pointing to. And this I have to just sort of do by inspection, uh, at least in this particular case here, and just see that, hey, this is pointing to something that's an integer. So really, we want to treat this void star as a integer pointer. And then, of course, if we want the actual value out, we need to dereference this. And then now we can actually uh, run our program. So let's go ahead and give this a try. And if I run this, we will see x is 42. So that's pretty cool. 
And again, this is powerful because I can point to any particular data type that I'd like. And this allows flexibility depending on if you have a very dynamic system and just need to point to things. So some areas where you might want to use these types of things, again, are in event-driven programming and so on. Now let's go ahead and extend the power of our example by looking at how would I assign this pointer now to something totally different, like a function. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new function here. Let's just call it print. And I'll just go ahead and call printf called the print function. And we'll just do something uh, simple like this here. And that'll be it. So it's just a function with no uh, arguments here and no return. Okay, so first and foremost, so let's go ahead and let me just go ahead and label this uh, void star to a regu to a uh, int pointer and void star to a void function just because I want to do a few examples just to get you um, familiar with the actual syntax. Um, well, again, first thing that we need to do is just take our generic pointer and point it to this function here, like print, for instance. Now, I don't have to put the address of print here. Functions by default have them, so I can go ahead and get rid of that. Now, let's go ahead and just see if that much compiles here. So it does indeed compile. And let's see if I can just call this or how would I actually use this. So if I just tried something like generic function here, well, it's going to give me, again, a bunch of sort of errors here. It's going to say, hey, hey error called on this object generic function, uh, generic pointer, the name of our variable here. And it's going to say it's not a function or a function pointer. Because again, it doesn't know anything about this particular data. It's just void. It doesn't um, have a particular data type. So again, in order to call this function, we just can't dereference it. And in general, that's the rule, right? With a void star, we can't dereference a void star pointer. We have to cast it to the right type. And again, because we have to, as programmers, choose the right type, that's what makes this dangerous. So I'm going to, again, highlight this this time in red just to be careful. <laughs> so let's actually make it so that we can do the function call by casting this to the right uh, function type here. Now, you're going to have to follow me along a little bit on the syntax here because it's a little bit weird here. But uh, for function pointers, and again, um, sometimes I don't remember these, but I'm going to start from the inside here. And we have void, which is the return type of this function. And this is going to be uh, a pointer to something here. No arguments. And then I'll close the parentheses here. So this is essentially the uh, function pointer syntax for calling this function here. And then um, I'm going to uh, actually just uh, let me go ahead and just wrap this uh, function here all the way around. And then the arguments here are empty. And let me go ahead and get rid of these spaces here. OK, so let's go ahead and compile this. And now if I go ahead and run it, now we'll see that, well, we call the print function. And again, we never called print anywhere. And just to prove that this works, if I comment out that line that we did, let's go ahead and recompile, rerun. And again, um, we can see that this is, in fact, doing the right thing here. So again, let's just go ahead and compile it, rerun it. And we can see that this is what's calling the print function. At one point, it was pointing to this memory address. And then another point, it's pointing to the actual function here. Now let's go ahead and just do a few more examples with the function pointers, because again, these are uh, sort of the weird ones uh, syntactically. And then I'll try to give you a hint um, as to how to um, improve this. Um, again, so just how to uh, read these. Uh, let's go ahead and give ourselves a uh, function here, this time with a return type. This time, it'll just return the value 42. So then I'll take this generic pointer, point it to this function here, return 42. And then I have to do the appropriate syntax. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this one that I have. And again, just to sort of step by step show you what's going on here. Uh, this time, the return type is an integer here. So that's what I am substituting here. So let's go ahead and give this a save. Go ahead and uh, recompile, rerun. And well, there's really nothing here. So let's go ahead and just store the result. And maybe printf here. Result is, and we'll go ahead and put the integer here from our result. Recompile, 
rerun, and we can see our result is 42. Now, this is a little bit ambiguous with our uh, variable here. So just to make sure that we did the right call here, I'm just going to change this to 500. And let's just go ahead and run it. So again, you can see that this is, in fact, returning the value from this function that we are pointing to called return 42. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example here. Um, this time, let's go ahead and use two arguments, maybe just a sum function, or I'll call it add. And we'll just add two integers together and just return a plus b here. And again, use this um, previous code we have. And again, I'm just going to modify here what we're pointing to. This time it is the uh, add function. So add. And the parameters here for our function pointer are int and int. And well, let's add two and five here. So we should get a result of seven. Um, Oops, I've redefined a uh, result. Don't need to do that. So I'll get rid of that. Recompile and rerun here. Okay, so now we can see that this is the function pointer uh, syntax here. Now, I will say this syntax is a little bit um, nasty here, but you could use a type def, for instance, just to make this a little bit more clear um, or define or something. And that's what folks will uh, often do in their code here. Okay, so just to start wrapping us up, let's go ahead and just look at all the code here on uh, one screen here, just so we can see uh, everything uh, that we have done for our uh, particular sample here. So I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here, just so you can see uh, on one screen how to use these particular code examples. Now, again, you might be wondering, where is void star used? And we've actually been using it quite a bit if you've been following along in this series. And if I go ahead and look at the malloc, uh, function. This is a popular function here where we can actually see it's returning a void star. And that's because when we're asking for memory, we're essentially just asking for some block of memory. We don't know the particular type. But you might have noticed when we actually use functions like malloc. So if I go ahead and um, were to use uh, malloc here, usually I would say what the memory type is, you know, some memory. And then on the uh, right side of this, You'll, you might have noticed, at least in my tutorial videos, that I cast the memory here just to make sure that we are matching this size here. And sometimes the compiler can give us a hint here um, to make sure that we're interpreting that memory in the correct way. So that's just an, an example. But again, because malloc doesn't know the exact type of memory uh, that it's going to hand to us or the types of objects, that's why it just returns a void star for us. All right, folks, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope you learned a little bit about void star. I think a lot of folks try to avoid void star. And unless you're trying to do generic programming in C, uh, that would be the use case where you might want to use it. But again, you have to be a little bit careful. You have to be careful not to dereference void star. In fact, it's uh, illegal to do so. Uh, but you do have to make sure that you are casting to the right type if you do choose to use it. So with that said, folks, I hope this was interesting and insightful to see how this works. And I'll look forward to seeing you in our next day in C.